Hello, I'm Roman Yankovsky. In this video, we will talk about static code analysis. Then I will overview the fix inside features. The most time we will spend looking at the fix inside in action with a simple project. And in the end, I will take any questions. Software quality and reliability are very important. Static analysis allows you to find issues in your code that cannot be found by the compiler. Actually, compiler doesn't care if your code works or not. It only wants its syntax to be correct. Static analysis tool, like FixInsight, tries to make more broad look at your code and figure out what it actually does, to notice you about potential issues. They are not always the actual bugs, but usually these are the places that worth paying attention for. This is especially true when you are working with legacy code. It's a well-known fact that bugs found early in program development are cheaper to fix. It costs significantly more to fix a bug at the end of the project than it does to fix the same bug earlier. And if you have a tool that can help us reduce a number of bugs on early development stages, it is a good reason to use it. You can use Static Analysis tool to review your code manually, or it can be integrated in your continuous integration process in order to stop deployment if something can find from. FixInsight is a static analysis tool for Delphi. You can think of it as a compiler extension that lets you instantly find issues in your code. It's user-friendly and it integrates seamlessly in Delphi, and it outputs its messages in familiar messages window. It is absolutely easy to use. FixInsight can check your code for potential critical issues. Else, it can check your code for coding conventions compliance. Now, I will show you several examples. Let's see how it works. There is a sample project. It can be compiled without any, without any hints or warnings. Let's try. No hints, no warnings, no errors. But there are a lot of issues. Let's try to run fix inside and see. This is the run fix inside window. On the left hand, you see the list of available checks and rules, coding convention checks and possible bugs warnings. Conventions are things that should be done in a certain way. They might be described as enforcing a certain coding style. For instance, one of conventions ensures that all private fields, fields or variables in a class starts with F, a long time Delphi convention. Warnings indicate something odd is happening in your code, either odd or downright wrong. If you select a particular item on the right hand, you will see its description. Some of rules have additional options that is also shown on the right hand side. Ok, go ahead. You see fix inside output and messages window. If you double click on one of these items, it takes you to the spot in your code where the problem occurs. The empty except block warning means that exception is caught but not handled correctly, which in turn means that the cause of the exception that may occur in the try block is still there and affecting the application. Let's remove it. Next. This looks like a tipple. One semicolon renders the entire if clause useless. This line of code always executes unconditionally. A typical copy and paste issue. You see, this block of code is equal to this block of code. Not a big deal if you did it unintentionally, like for debugging purposes, but in case of an attentive copy and pasting, the if statement effective effectively check nothing and makes the program execute the same code regardless of this condition. I think it should be like this. False. Everything is false. Okay. 
okay next uh, the last line of this loop never executes much worse if the break closer resides deep in the logic of this block so the problem becomes less evident than it is in this simple example this example is very simple but it is something just to show you how it works next okay look uh, these conditionals if and else if are the same looks like the values of os compass sensor is checked against were different sometime in the past or even uh, the variables were different i think it was uh, like this this could be a source of errors see two parameters one value it's unlikely that you will ever see what the coordinates in the example really is this will compile but will never work i think it should be like that uh, next dynamic arrays in dolphy are indexed from zero to length minus one which seems to be incorrect on this example It seems that someone has forgotten to use with here, or the entire block was copied from another part of code, and then was modified on site. Either way, this free looks suspicious in this context. Should it really free up memory of the T4 and 5 instance? I think not. It should be like this. Next. Uh, default caption variable hide hides the class member of the same name. If you look on T4 and 5 declaration, you will find the property with the same name. So, in, the, in this example, uh, default caption is uh, invisible from within the method. Default caption property, I mean. Uh, so, uh, implementer caption value will always be set to the value of local default caption not the default caption property but who knows also i do not recommend this uh, sometimes you do this intentionally i will show you another fixed side feature in order to suppress a warning you may use a special comment very simple fi and the number of a warning W517 the next well, this looks like a typo accessing a property in this getter and uh, get default caption is a getter of default caption property uh, this uh, may lead to infinite recursion it must be F default caption here, I think. Well, uh, let's try to run fix that again. Okay, empty. Everything was fixed. It's not a full list of warnings supported by fixing site. You can download the trial from the website and run it against your own projects to learn more. Fixinsight also can be run separately as a command line tool. This makes it easy to integrate in any build process with your favorite continuous integration software like Final Builder. It can output its analysis results as plain text or XML. Uh, there is a link to Fixinsight website. It also there is a link to a blog where you can find more practical, practical examples. For instance, there you can find uh, how I run fixing site over VCL and FireMonkey of Delphi, and what I learned. 
especially for CodeRage participants, I offer a coupon for 10% discount. Thank you for your attention. Hope you enjoy that. Questions? Okay, great. Thank you, Roman. Let's go ahead and unmute you here. If anybody's got any questions for Roman on static code analysis or fixed insight, go ahead and post those now and we'll get them answered for you. Are you there, Roman? Hello? Oh, there you are. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. So, any questions here? Uh, there's not any questions yet on uh, for fixed insider static code analysis. And it takes a couple seconds for getting here. Uh, what are the limitations of the trial version? Uh, the trial version uh, outputs not more than four uh, warnings per unit. So uh, it, it 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 almost unlimited. It shows. Uh, uh, full functionality, all warnings, all convention checks, but uh, the only limitation is is it, it it is that it can can show only four uh, warnings per unit. Okay, per okay per time. So that okay. Uh, what version of Delphi or what versions of Delphi does it work on? Uh, any version starting from Delphi two thousand six and to Seattle. So. That's it. Okay. 2006, 2007, and so on until uh, newest one. Uh, Mark saying he just started using Fix Insight and it's great. I think it's a pretty cool tool as well. Thanks. Uh, a couple of people downloading the trial. Uh, is there an option to s tell it to skip a certain warning from reporting? Yeah, I showed it in my uh, presentation. Okay, there is a special comment to suppress the warning, or else you can use a special computer conditional to suppress a warning for a piece of code. Um, everything in the documentation. Okay. Uh, Barton saying he a feature request he would love to scan for objects that should be free. So if you can create something that would look for a dot free to make sure it was cleaned up. Yeah, actually, it is on the roadmap. I think this will be implemented in future lists. Okay, very cool. I look forward to that one. Uh, what's your update policy? How how do you provide updates, and what how does that work? Um, sorry. Uh, for updates, when the new like a new version of Delphi comes out, do people have to buy an upgrade, or how does that work? Uh, no, when you uh, purchase a license, you get a year of free updates. It doesn't matter if there are any new Delphi's or not, you get exactly a year of updates. Okay. And so then after a year, when new features come out, you'd buy a, uh, you'd resub resubscribe. Yeah, you, 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 can, you can still use old version, but to get new updates, you, can, you, you have to uh, prolong your license. Okay. Uh, Richard saying, I've purchased the software and it has helped me find a few things that could have led to bugs, great stuff, and folks should support this type of software for Delphi users. I agree, Richard, great stuff. And I was, I was surprised a number of things. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> so it really it does help find some things that are not intuitively obvious um, that can be problems. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it easy to add your own coding style rules using JSON or XML for fixed insight to test enforced? Sorry, I've missed that. Uh, not, not now. You, you know, there is some uh, basic settings like how many lines of code can be in the method or how many parameters you allow to to have. But it's very simple, so it's still on the roadmap. I think uh, in the future there will be more settings. Now I more focus it on uh, warnings than on conversion checks. Okay, so another feature to look forward to. 
Okay, fantastic. You know, actually, I had someone the other day telling me they're looking for some static code analysis tools to help them track down uh, potential security issues. So not just bugs, but specifically around the idea of security, possible security vulnerabilities in the in the application. That wasn't. Is that something you've thought about implementing in Fix Insight or? Uh, not yet. Actually, I have a very long today to do list, but so one day it will have security checks. I think. Okay. I was trying to think what some of the potential security sets are because I know that like the biggest one in other desktop applications is the or, or de as desktop development tools is the buffer overflow type security. Yeah. But that's Agreed. not something you can really have. Well, you can do it in Delphi, but it would actually be hard <laughs> because we have these great strings that are not uh, null terminated fixed length size strings. So, Actually, any, any pointers, uh, operations are uh, potential security flaws. Yeah, exactly. Any but any time you had a pointer. So maybe that's what you should just have is a, a, a scan that says, hey, you're using pointers. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Doing it the hard way. Uh, Barton's adds he would love to use XML or JSON to add his own rules. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, that would. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I, that's all the questions are here right now, so we can wait a second and see if any more flood in here. Um, James is asking, does it fully support Rad Studio Seattle? I'm not sure. Do you mean Delphi and C++, or what do you mean by that, James? No, only, only Delphi. It doesn't work with C++, unfortunately. Does it fully support Delphi Seattle, I guess, then? Is that... Is yes, question? full support Delphi, but not C++. Support. And in your syntax, uh, it, it works fine with modern Delphi, but not with C++. Not with C++. Okay, he said that's, that's great. Uh, can it be expanded to support string resources from different sources? For format analysis, um, I don't. I don't think I understand the question. Can you explain? Yeah, let's see if you can get an explanation on that one. Uh, he's there's one guy saying he accidentally shut down the result window and can't find it under the view menu to bring it back. Uh -huh. I, I think you can run fix site again it should appear again. To do what now? Run it again? Yeah, I think so. It, it, it uses the same uh, messages window as compiler does, so probably you can find it in view messages. Or look for Yes, the... in, in, in Delphi menu, uh, click few messages and it should appear. Okay. Because it uses it use the same window as uh, compiler does, just a different tab. Alf's asking if it reports possible memory leaks. Uh, it's a very broad question because uh, memory leaks can be anything. Uh, so, uh, Yes, and at the same time, no, it has some rules uh, that checks uh, issues uh, that can possibly run to lead to memory leaks. But um, from other side, as uh, one of the previous questions asked it, to uh, check if, uh, if objects are really freed, there's no such check for, for now, so far. So there are some checks exist, but some checks are still not. So the, um, uh, the tool is still rapidly developing. Does uh, this make sense? Yeah, I think so. So you got um, Eric saying he can't find the download of the trial. Yeah, if you look at documentation, you will find a full list of uh, situations that are purchased by fixed site. Already downloaded the trial at oh right here free trials available. Yeah, download. No. So right here, Eric. I'll paste it in here for you. Well, uh, let's see. So Alexander's saying um, that his strings are stored in a database, and he needs a function to access them. 
And so he's wanting to you know if it could be expanded to uh, anal analyze, analyze that as well. Oh, so maybe he's asking if it could check to see if his strings exist in the database to the functions trying to access them. I don't think so, actually. How, how, how could I check the database it's if it's still yeah. tool? Uh, actually, one of my plans was for future releases was to, to analyze DFM files because uh, sometimes you can, for instance, check the settings of data set and then to, uh, figure out which uh, fields it have to, to analyze source code and um, check if you do everything correctly. No, oh, that'd be cool. Could be used, very cool, very useful. Yeah, so coming in future list. All right. Thirty day money that guarantee, and then you're saying that there's the one year upgrades and then one twenty seven is the regular price, but you get a ten percent discount, so you buy now yeah. with the discount code code rage x so um does it follow compiler switches that turn part of code active or inactive or does it so if you have part of it your code turned off by compiler switches conditional defines is that yes it's, uh, of course it follows uh, complete conditional defines of course okay all right. Well, fantastic. Lots of great features. Oh, here's more questions coming in. Um, how does it interact with build servers, for example, Jenkins? Uh, there's no uh, special integration with uh, build servers for now, but uh, you can use command line tool to get uh, the output in XML and uh, do any automation you want with this XML. Okay. That's yeah, I have some customers who uh, use it uh, in integration with uh, continuous integration tools, so it's, it's not a problem. Steve. If you have some uh, special ideas uh, that could make it easier to integrate, just email me and I will look what can I do. Uh, Steve's saying that there's a big future for code analysis because uh, the we're have, developing less and less tolerance for bugs in code, and it's so it, the more you can catch that through code analysis, the better. Yes, I think that's true. Um, is are you allowed to use one? Um, if you've bought, if you only bought buy one license, can you install it on multiple Delphi versions for one? Yeah, person? of course, of course, it's a per developer license. So uh, if you use it. If you alone, you can uh, use it for any number of Delphi instances. Seems like everybody's got multiple installs anymore. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, if I have some switches included in an include f text file, is that text file analyzed for switches? Uh, yes. It uh, recently in, in previous uh, release, I think, and it, it started to support includers too. So if you have uh, compiler switches in the include file, it will be used. Uh, and then can you specify the like formatting options like use two spaces for a tab, et cetera? Or does it do formatting stuff? No, no, no. As I told before, I, there were simple uh, options for conversion checks. Now I'm more focused on warnings for possible bugs than okay. in, uh, formatting options. Okay. I think that's it. Hold on just one second here. I got to grab something. Oh, let's see. Another question popped in here. Can I av avoid uh, analysis of units that are not included in the DPR file? Uh, there is an option to um, 
in uh, run access and search window, there's a checkbox, include search pass, you can just uncheck it. And, and to, to not analyze anything except uh, units that include in DPR file and tell so there is uh, in the same window, ignore units uh, text box. You can type any unit names you want and this units will be ignored. Uh, there's some more, so he's saying he's getting warnings saying his method names are too long or his methods are too long and just curious what specs those are based, those warnings are based on. Uh, on uh, the, the count of lines. So what's the, what's the um, metrics decide when something's too long versus just right? Uh, it's, it count uh, how many lines this uh, method. And uh, you set uh, this, the total the value in uh, settings by default to 50. So if this method um, longer than 50 lines of so code, then you will have a message. But you can change this uh, value to anything you want. Okay, good. Okay, Richard's saying, can you specify a package file instead of a DPR file in the command line version? Uh, yes, I think so. It should work. Is line counting based on number of lines or are comments included? Uh, comments included. Okay, sure. comments are included. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much, Roman, for this. This is a great session, great tool, really useful, a lot of good feedback here. Uh, oh, thank you. One more question, where do you find the settings? Sorry? Where do you find settings? Where do you configure the settings on it? Uh, settings, uh, save it uh, in the same folder that your project is, in, uh, in a separate uh, XML file. So it is uh, per project set of settings. Each project has its own settings. Oh, each project has its own settings. Yeah. So it's the, what is the, is the file name the same as the project name? Yes, it's the same uh, as the project name and uh, FI uh, settings extension. Oh, dot FI settings? If I, can, if I, if I can config. If I config. So, yeah. So it's uh, the name is the same as, uh, as the project name, and the uh, extension is if I config. So okay. it's in the same folder as uh, your project is. Great. That's great. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much. Oh, here another yeah, question. Another question is so, coming in. Hold on. So what's interesting? Well, lots of questions here. Uh, if dividing a method into main would um, into main method and include subroutines, would it then stop warning, or is all code inside main method included in warning? Oh, if you take code uh, out of main, and only uh, only the code between uh, begin and end of this method. So subroutines are not included. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again so much, and we'll let you go this time. Talk to you later. If, you, if somebody has some more questions, uh, please email me, and I will reply. Okay. Give Roman an email if you have any questions, and he'll, take, he'll help you out. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you.